Hello guys and welcome in this new video in the game engine series. Now in the previous video we have been talking about texture manager and the parser of textures. So we created like a method which we use to parse our texture. The idea was like we had like an XML file in which we actually add our texture files with their IDs and the path um, to those textures. And then we simply pass this file name to a parser that will simply go out and grab all these uh, texture in this file and add them in our program so that we can use them because the problem was that we had these huge lines of code right here every time we had to create to add a new texture in our game or our game engine we had to write this you know and this actually increased the size of the code which also uh, make the program slower to compile to be compiled and you know we want to reduce the compile time as possible and this is actually why we actually do this. And now we can simply use one single line as you can see right here and pass the name of that XML file and you know pass all those texture. But this is not done during the compilation phase. That's the difference. This is going to be done when we're running the application. So we reduce the compiling time and that's actually good. It's a good thing. So if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, you can still go back and check that out in the previous video we've been dealing that and uh, you can see right here we have all those texture on the screen and yeah that's that's the whole idea of that now in this video we're gonna be um, doing something else we're gonna be changing some couple of things in our animation and uh, we want to make sure that we we are able to make better animations because there is basically two ways of making animation the first way is the one we have been using since we, we started this with the sprite sheet. So you have like a sequence of image on a single image and there you simply look through and select the part of the image you want to draw on the screen. But there is also another way of making animation. This is um, which is through image sequence. So you have like se uh, single images which you can actually you know use to create an animation and you have like a speed or like a time that you need to switch from an image to another one to create the animation and that's what we're actually going to be doing and since uh, the, the, these are two uh, two ways of making animation we didn't want to mix them in a single animation class that's why we had to change the animation class our animation class that we had before is going to be now an abstract class which is going to be um, inherited from sprite animation, sequence animation. You know, this is the name I found for them. This, should, this is normally the same thing, but you can call it whatever you want. Take the name that fit for you. But I'm coming to that in a couple of seconds. I'm just kind of set up what we're going to be doing. And yeah, that's why it's important for us to do that. And we simply inherit from animation in the sequence and sprite because those two ways of making animation actually have similarities and we want to you know reduce as much as possible lines of code so that's what we're going to be doing in this video but before we get started i really want to you know invite you guys to subscribe to Medicode. that's a way you can actually support my work but you can also go out and support me on patreon and you know become a patron you will get also access to some uh, specific content you will also be able to download the project and um, you can also have access to the uh, github repository i have for this project actually which is private you could get access to the final version of this and you know if you don't want to watch this through you can also go out and begin on patreon and you'll get access on that and all that kind of stuff so let's get started Now, you can see in my folder animation right here, we have uh, new files that we've added. Just want to close some of these files right here. And leave them. Okay. Now we start by the animation. So as I said, the animation class that we had before is now going to be an abstract class. 
so you can see right here it takes like a parameter called repeat this is when we want to somehow make our animation repeat itself forever and ever and ever that's why we're using this variable right here and you can see we have repeat and it's ended so those two variables actually um, tells us if the uh, if the animation is ended if the animation is finished whatever and uh, this one make sure the animation will keep looping forever and we have the update function which takes a delta time which we won't use right now but it's important to just say that like that and we also have this function which return the value of this ended and when we initialize our function our animation we simply go out and you know repeat is always set to true as default and ended is by the initialization false because you know that's important to make sure that we have that now you can see if i go out and open our sprite animation we had before this is what we had before now you can see right here i include my animation now i make inheritance right here and you know the the constructor is going to be taking the same the same value the same thing as since it's inheriting from this it's going to be taking the same parameter we have the update function which we're going to be implementing here you can see here this was a virtual we had to implement this function that's why we have it here our draw function hasn't changed it hasn't changed all we have added you remember this uh, these scale things because we needed that so we just add these two variables for the scale value and uh, we also have the set property which hasn't changed those functions right here are not needed I was just making a test with that so just don't worry about that the rest is just the same I haven't changed anything about this so and if we go in the CPP file we um, what is wrong right here yeah we haven't added this, um, these scale values in our draw frame. So I want to make that right now because if I don't, then it should work normally. That's not a big deal. Just take the values right here. I already have some custom values right here. So we leave it like that for now. It's working. Because if I compile it, you see it's working. We, ha we just haven't used those values. That's why those scale values. So this is basically the same thing. Now we have this other sequence animation right here. As I said, this guy takes single image and make animation out of them. But we're gonna be doing this using the power of our XML that we created. This parser, we're gonna be you know somehow parsing animation. That's gonna be more powerful for us to deal with this kind of animation. Up here we have like a sequence. So a sequence is, for example, when we have our player, we have the uh, run sequence, we have the jump sequence, we have the fall sequence. Those are sequences. That's how I call them. So it doesn't matter what you think right now. So that's how I call them. So those are sequences and we have information about sequence right here. Now you can see we created like, a, like a, the current sequence. So if I add this, sequence animation to my player for example I want to know which one is the current sequence of the player is the player running is the player idling and so go on and here we have like a map in which we have all sequence of that component for the player for example we we'll simply pass those or simply add those sequence using an ID like we simply say run and we add the sequences and you can see the sequence right here has some information the speed for you know the time we need to change between two frames and the frame count how many frames how many images do we have for this animation animation the width and the height and we also uh, have this uh, vector right here which stores all ids of those textures of those images so our for example our jump i think our jump animation our jump sequence has two frames so we're going to be storing uh, each frame the texture ID of each frame right here in this matrix and we're gonna be looped through those texture and simply render them and if you remember in the previous video we were able to simply a texture using this so we can simply go out and a texture in this file and here we we'll simply create another XML file called 
player animation in which we'll simply add our IDs and we'll simply pass them and add them in this and we'll have this figure out. I, I'm not sure we will have time to do that in this video but we're gonna be uh, doing that definitely for the enemy. We're gonna be creating our enemy probably at the end or in the next video or we're gonna see. Now um, yeah that was important for me to explain. You can see right here we have some important function. The update is the virtual function from the parent class animation. You know the constructor there's no nothing to say. We also have this parser right here which pass an animation. We're gonna be dealing with that. It's coming so don't worry. And we have the set current sequence. So if for example we want to change this the state of the player to run and uh, from run to jump then we simply set the current sequence and we give the sequence ID which is in this sequence map right here. Now set repeat. We want to set if the, the animation is going to be repeated or not. And here we have draw frame which I'm going to be changing to draw just like that. And the rest is the same thing as before. Now I have to switch over to the sequence CPP. Make sure I remove the draw frame or we can simply leave it because we're actually drawing frames. So no one is angry with that. So why should I change that? So we go to the CPP file and here you can see this is the initialization. We simply call our repeat and we pass the repeat that is given. So that's straightforward. We have our draw function. Why does it have draw? Ah, I'm in the sprite animation. I'm not in the sequence. Sorry. Here is it. So we have this sequence animation right here. We call the constructor. We have our draw frame function, which simply called the draw frame, the draw of the texture manager. If you see right here, we're not drawing a frame. We're simply drawing an image with full size. That's why we're not using draw frame here. We're using draw simply. And here we normally pass our scale X and scale Y. The update function. This is how we want to update this. We want to make sure they repeat. This is because sometimes you want to make sure uh, an animation is not repeated. And you know, that's why we're doing this right here. That's why we check, okay, if repeat is set and we're not ended, then we set ended to false because end is not it's not ended right now. So in the current frame, we calculate the new value of the current frame and we can keep using that frame up here to render. You can see we say current sequence, the sequence that the current sequence that we've set it, we say texture ID. If you remember the sequence actually has the texture ID right here. So we say texture IDs and we pass the current sequence. We take the value, the number of the frequency of the frame that we have to draw on the screen. That's what we're doing right here. And we also say current sequence width and current sequence height. And down here we do, we also check, okay, if not repeat and the current frame is equal to the last frame. See, that's why we take frame count minus one. We say, okay, and that is equal to true. So this is in the case the animation is not repeated when we don't have to repeat. We say current frame is equal to current frame my uh, equal to current frame frame count minus one because we want to make sure we stayed at the last frame. So we animate till the last frame and we stay there. That's the idea. Now set current sequence. It simply take an ID. We have our sequence map here which we pass from the XML file. We're coming to that, and if we want to change the sequence, we simply say okay. We give the ID and the sequence is going to be set it. So, and what we're doing right here is we check if this sequence actually exists. If not, we return this message, this message right here. If this sequence here doesn't match what we have in our map right here, we simply return an error message. And now we finally got our parser. So what it does, so it's important for me to show you the XML file from which we're going to be parsing. So for that, I have this file right here. You can see, this is basically, um, we have a new character that we're gonna be using to make this animation. I need to show you that character. So let me go ahead and grab that first. Go to my assets folder and paste it here. So I call it boss. This is like the boss. 
and in there we have different um, sequences so you can see i have this folder right here in my eyes in my asset you will find this in the um, in the source code in the description below so you get access in that so this isn't my creation i download it from i i don't know ith.io something like that so you can see we have different um we have image sequence right here you see those are different image for each state we have attack we have uh, appear when the when you try to appear so and here in this file i simply add those file right here with the with their ids so we have these animations so we have here animations and in the animation we create sequences we have this sequence right here for both idol this is the id if you remember our map our map right here actually takes an id a string which is that id and we have the frame count we have the speed of that animation the width and the height of each frame in that and here we just list those frames and if you can see right here we haven't give the path to the frames we simply give the id the guy who is in charge of texture id is the texture file that's why we need to add those information in this file right here so that's the reason why i simply added all those images all those textures you can see we have boss idle one this is the source of it so if i go into my or oh, i have to change this asset so small assets sorry i can do this fast with yes code and we got this because our assets folder has a small a so i want to make sure i don't mess up with that i want to make sure i don't because you see right here we have asset it's a and we want to make sure we have the correct value right here so here i just ate those are the images and those are the ids and what i do in the animation is i simply use those ids so i'll simply pass ids and we simply use those IDs to make animation. That's actually what makes this so interesting. So that's 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 it. So as I said, if you don't have like a sprite images, you have a lot out there in the internet. You can download them and use them, or you can simply download the source code in the description, and you'll have access on all that. You'll be able to get the same result as me without spending your time trying to find the full value of the speed of width and all that kind of stuff. So. So what this parser actually does is it go inside of that animation file and pass all sequences so the first thing you want to pass is the animation the sequence id you can see we set the sequence id to this so we create a new sequence we load uh, the sequence id the attribute you can see right here sequence id boss idle that's why we get that one and we get the the speed the width the height the frame count so we have all those information right here you can see frame count speed width and height and now we use those variables right there to create a new sequence that's why we adding those value to this to the sequence value right here and in tiny xml we already talked about this if you want to get a number attribute you pass it you pass the address of that number and the value of this attribute will be written in that variable that's why we go to sequence and we say speed now here we want to pass all those texture ids that's why we go out and say okay so we have the sequence that we got right here we simply make a loop through these frames right here and we simply pass the texture id we pass the texture id as you can see right here the texture id and we simply pass them and push them in our vector of texture ids of our sequence you can see texture id is a vector so we simply push them inside and this is how we can simply pass an animation and now we finally want to add that into our map to add that into our map we simply say sequence id and we add that so i think this is really better because if we create our player we'll simply you know pass the animation from that file and everything will be dealt without us having to write any single line of code and again this is important because if you have to create like a ui where you want to create animation this will be the best way to deal with it 
will be able to always come back and see what you did before because you can save it in a file. That's why we want to use this data-driven architecture in our engine. So, hope this is not uh, too complicated for you guys. I'm trying to explain as you know the best as I can, and I hope you guys are enjoying this. We won't use it in this video. I think we don't want to make this too long, and that's so much information for now. In the next video, we're gonna be creating like enemy, and we're gonna be using this sequence animation to, on on that enemy because you see we created the XML file and everything. We already have everything done, but we just want to move and do that in the next video. So I will hope to catch you there. Don't leave without subscribing. And remember, you can still go out and support me on Patreon. This will also give you access to exclusive content and you will also be able to ask me questions personally. And you know, that's how we do it. So see you in the next video. Ciao.